Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Taco Bites, your daily bite of DGen, episode 201.2. We got rugged by Twitter. Uh, we're going to, over this next section, we're about to go stop at a gas station real quick um, and get gas. Oh, we just filled up on gas, but it was closed, so we need to get that caffeine. Because you do know my life is crypto cigars and caffeine. I do not know what that store is, but it looks amazing. Um, and so uh, we're going to talk next about Zen, East Denver 2023, and South by Southwest. So we're going to go on mute for just a minute as we uh, prepare uh, to get more caffeine in ourselves. But uh, we will be here. Will you?
We are back again. We have to go to a different gas station. Uh, that is the amazing piece uh, of this. So there are a lot of gas stations. There are a lot of gas stations, but none of them are open. Uh, and that is what we are after. So we will be back in just. Clearance cannabis. Oh, just what I want. Clearance cannabis, the stuff that we cannot get anywhere else. So, Eskimo, as we uh, are heading to the next gas station, uh, we're going to be talking about Zen. Uh, then we'll roll into Eat Denver, then South by Southwest. All right. Um, I don't know. Uh, stuff, with, you know, talk about Zen. Like, Well, I guess you probably talked about how exciting it was to meet Sensu. Yeah. And Jack. Yeah. At East Denver. Yeah. Be able to sit down with them for a little bit and just uh, fan kid to them. It was it was really cool to sort of talk um, shop with 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 Sensu, uh, with Jack. Um, you know, Jack got to meet up with. Uh, some old researchers friends um, and what's really hilarious is I uh, talked about him with uh, another founder of another uh, protocol um, and he was like oh yeah I remember him he was like a real crypto anarchist <laughs> and uh, yeah so it, it, it's it, it's sort of fun I think I see the gas station in the distance yeah, the one that has a real truck stop sign. Yeah, the, the giant, giant tower. It's a monument. Giant tower of gas. Truck stop monument. Okay. So Here people can see it. That's right. Yeah. Oh. Big and tall. Oh, that's an RV park. Oh, damn it. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, we are it's sort of great to sort of travel, travel the countryside a little bit. Um, as I was telling you, the last time we're, we're here in Raton and, and Trinidad, the last time I came through Raton Pass, uh, I was coming downhill, and uh, I had to. I, I watched a truck flip, slip, slam into a wall, skirt across. Scary. Um, and uh, a hydroplane, and then uh, flip and. Pulled the dad and his son out. That was that was sort of crazy. Um, so yeah, no, that was a uh, was a big thing there. Um, really uh, set the tone. I don't know for the last time I went through Raton Pass, and there's a there's a big tower. Set Raton. Yeah. So we're gonna go back on mute for a while as we. Uh, do what we need to do. Where's the big tower? It, 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 it's like this big sign. Oh.
Hello, hello, and welcome back to Taco Bites, your daily bite of DGen. We kept this one episode rolling for, let me apologize, as we got rugged by Twitter. Uh, we have Eskimo uh, with us, uh, listening in and talking, and here uh, we are now nine hours out from uh, Dallas as we head to South by Southwest um, in Austin after... Uh, a few days in Dallas. Uh, Eskimo, how are you doing? <laughs> we're having a technical difficulties, but we're okay. Eskimo. How are you doing? I'm great, Taco. Just like the last two times. <laughs> we got rolled. We got we got rolled by by Twitter. <laughs> you know the the term is is getting rugged, but man, we got rolled. <laughs> um. So, uh, we were talking Zen. All right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Zen let's... is like gem. Truly ex- amazing. Okay. Yeah. So, uh. My one favorite cartoon from like being nine. We're not going to Starkville. We are going <laughs> south on I twenty five, up into Raton Pass. Um, yeah. So hey, we may we may get rugged again, but we'll be back when we can be. Uh, we are driving all night. We are gonna run this Twitter space all night. Man, the algorithms are gonna love this one so much. So, uh, let's talk Zen. Uh, not only did we get to meet Sun Tzu, we got to meet Jack, we got to hang out with Walrus, but we also got to meet Phoenix Protocol. Joe. Yes, we did. And Phoenix Protocol, for those that don't know, is part of the Zen ecosystem. Um, and they use the burn feature within the Zen contract. Um, so if you burn your Zen through Phoenix, you get Phoenix token. And they're launching, going to be launching on all the chains. Um, what were some of your thoughts on Joe? Joe seemed like a super smart, great guy. Who also gets up and runs in the morning because he told me that he ran past, past Mount Yowl twice. Okay. So he's got that discipline. That can do? Yep. Okay. Uh, one of the cool things that, you know, got to learn a little bit of Joe's history. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he they're getting ready to build a mobile app uh, for Phoenix Protocol. Um, and they he literally was working on it over the weekend to have a, a demo piece out. Um, that's sort of cool. He has a long history of being an Apple developer, so he doesn't foresee any issues there. Um, but yeah, um, I know, I know you're currently not in the Phoenix protocol at all, but what are your thoughts after sort of talking with Joe a little bit? Is it something that you'll find out, figure some time to do or? Yeah, I'll be interested in both Phoenix and Nex. Um, my interest in them really is being able to get into the X1 token. Yeah, X one. You know, it's the it's the new it's the DevNet right now that that Jack is building out. Um, so it's uh, rather interesting to see. Um, right now, those that uh, earn Zen or mint uh, the Zen NFTs get uh, X one to play around with it while it's on DevNet and try it out. Um, so it's sort of cool. Uh, I know I minted, uh, let's just say a lot of wallets, a lot of wallets for Cointool for uh, Moonbeam Zen because I am wanting to uh, take that Zen and give it away. So for those listening later on. Did you happen to mention that to anyone while we were there? I did not. Yeah. 
I didn't, I, I didn't really think of that. It was sort of my own little side project that I've been building on. Um, so, uh, you know, if I want to get people that don't know about Zen a little excited about it. Um, and, uh, yeah. Well, I asked Jack a question. We got talking about something different. What I wanted to ask him was like, you know, I think he's, he wants people to understand, or me to understand, right? That Zen is out there. It is immutable. It is finished. It does what it does. You buy it, you hold it, you stake it, you sell it. And now you can burn it in a number of ways. And that is a turning point because, so what he said was, and you know, it's out there, it does them, those things, but now we have to give it, give it some utility. And that is where I think, you know, these flows of well, burning Zen. Though when people say that they burn Zen, they're burning Zen, or they're basically staking it, right? Yeah. To be able to earn a certain amount of Zen once they unlock that stake. Yeah. So, they burn it for now. Yep. And then they receive more Zen yep. for locking it up for that period of time. It doesn't disappear for them. Nope. In return, they also get the option to receive X1 token in the test net that will then translate into mainnet when mainnet goes live circa around Q1 2024. Yeah. So, yeah, no. Um, I know one of the cool things that I saw within Zen was that... Um, and that something that Jack is really, Jack and Sun Tzu are really into right now are ordinals. Yes. And I need to spend some time researching that just to understand it a bit better. Yeah. Uh, I do know they are creating a project. I think they just put out a couple of tweets about Zen Knights, which I believe is some of the graphic art, not graphic as in bad, graphic <laughs> Uh, art that they're going to be putting into those ordinals. Okay. Yeah, no, I think I, I think I saw some of that too. Um, so check out Sun Tzu. Um, if you get a chance, check out uh, Zen Crypto um, or, the, you know, faircrypto.org if you want to learn more about Zen. Um, so a project that, that we really sort of went out of our way to help uh, during ETH Denver um, and all of the conferences was, was poor pleb. Do we, uh, so for me, poor pleb, I like meme coins just for the fact, especially if I, I know the team. Yep. I like the community. Yeah. I like, I love the artwork. I love, you know, all of the artwork that they put out there. I think that it's a great collection of work and I can't wait to see what they do with it. Yeah. No, um, it was really fun for the simple fact that, uh, you know, I got to go tell everyone that they had proof of the biggest PP. I did not do that so much. I stayed with the poor pleb theme <coughs> just a little bit more. It's a little harder to say, but, uh, it doesn't confuse people when they look at uh, me. Yeah. No, um, I don't know. I think it was sort of fun. Um, it definitely, the, there's some really cool artwork because that, you know, just trying to put emotional thought, um, reminds me of like the days of like Wallace and Gromit, um, you know, pre-talking, you know, cartoons that could convey a message, uh, without, and let tell a story without having to speak. I thought that was pretty cool. 
And I know that, that that's sort of one of the things that they're trying to do with poor pleb. Um, you know, we're all pleeps. Uh, but uh, it was it was it was really fun. Um, but as we were talking about, super hard to give away money. Uh, poor pleb ran a five hundred dollar giveaway contest uh, for people doing a scavenger hunt, and uh, it was uh, it was rather interesting to see. Uh, Um, where uh, the effort people would go to, but it was really cool partnering with all the booths that were willing to uh, take poor pleb stickers because we were sort of telling people to go uh, look for those poor pleb stickers and talk to the booths. So it was really fun to to interact with, with protocols that way. Uh, I do want to give a huge shout out to team Knights of DGEN. Yeah, uh, they were all about it. They thought it was amazingly funny, um, and uh, they just they just you know they were totally accepting. Um, at they first, cool. uh, yeah. they um, I can't I think of his name right now. He lives in New York. Okay, uh, not Redbeard. Nope. Okay. I have it written down, but I can't grab that right now. Clay? Clay. Okay. Yeah. Cool guy. Yeah. He was very helpful. They had a great basketball net set up. I was actually talking to another project at one point. The basketball kept uh, getting uh, thrown past the basket <laughs> over to uh, like the other project. Yeah. Uh, but luckily, don't worry, nobody was hurt. Okay. Did the knights come to save you? I saved myself and then found the knights. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, you know who was re- who was there and, and showcasing some really cool uh, future collabs, but and that sort of uh, play on words there. Uh, Collabland. Collabland was there, and, and uh, a lot of people know Collabland uh, from you know using different discords to verify assets. Um, and they were sort of talking about what they're coming out with next on their security protocol sides. Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, also there was, you know, a handful of guys from, uh, a handful of people from, uh, BitBoy Crypto, uh, team, uh, out there, um, and the, the BitPo- uh, BitBoy Coin Academy. Uh, that have their own channels and stuff, and they were doing their own interviews, um, and so that was that was really good to see them uh, talk with them a little bit. Uh, always great, great to see familiar faces. So, hey, and we just entered New Mexico. Welcome. Um, we missed the sign, so we did not get to stop and take pictures. Oh darn! Darn it! But um, we are now in New Mexico. And out of the fog. Out of the fog, yeah. That was that was sort of weird. Could not see. Um, I love fog because your immediate reaction is, hold on, let me put the uh, my rights. rights on, and then it just gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> so, I will agree with you. It does get worse looking up, but it does let you see the road better sometimes. Yeah. Um, but we might get rugged a little bit as we uh, hop through... Uh, time zones and uh, it's uh, it's going to be fun to see us uh, what we do um, but so other projects that, one big project that uh, got to talk with a lot and have some fun with and you had, got to have some fun with them too um, but timely Was this the Golden Egg Project? This was the Golden Egg Project. Yes. I almost had the golden ticket. You almost had the golden egg. I know. How much ETH was in there, we'll never know. We will never know. Knowing you is probably like the two ETH egg. Yeah. Um, Snapping, snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. That's me. Oh, man. 
But uh, yeah, no, uh, that was fun to watch you do that. Um, I actually won when I did it. Uh, I won ten dollars. Felicitaciones. Yeah. Uh, we'll see when Timely delivers that. Um, and that, that's sort of one of the things I, I sometimes don't always like about projects that do giveaways that don't give you it away right then and there. You sort of feel bad yeah. asking about it. Like, hey, uh, when's this coming? Because, you know, you know they just spent a ton of money traveling and stuff like that. But, you know, and you, you know that they're on top of it. Well, that's a bet. That's a bet. Uh, so it's sort of cool. Uh, we'll get on it. One of the projects in the next next uh, three weeks that I'm going to get on top of, can you guess? DeLorean. Oh, yeah. Where's the car? Where's the NFT of the car? Yeah. So We don't actually want the car yet. Yet. But, uh, yeah. Uh, unless someone wants to buy it for for us for zero x dgens, um, <laughs> yeah. oh, there's the New Mexico sign. Welcome to New Mexico. Um, but uh, yeah, no, uh, we uh, got to meet a lot of great teams. Um, the one booth that I searched high and low for, which is it was a phantom. It was a phantom, but was the phantom booth from Solana? I. My day, I even wore my Solana Hacker House shirt. I had my, my Solana Hacker House bag. I was trying to find them, and I couldn't find them. And that you made me a little all, sad. You were all over it, trying. Um, I even did videos posting out to them. Where are you? But, uh, yeah. I, I should have done some different videos where, like, I was, like, in, like, back tunnels or something like that. That would have been fun. You know? Um, so, all right, eat Denver. What else? What else? What else was your takeaway there? Uh, let's see. What other takeaways did you have? Uh, if you dress up like a dodo bird, a lot of people will come to your booth. Okay. Um, I just like the dodo bird. The dodo bird? Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see. W weren't they... Dr uh, I thought it was a pudgy penguin when you first sent it that picture. Oh. When you first posted it. Because it was like a big yellow banana looking thing. Yeah. I thought it was a pudgy penguin. Oh. Well, if it was a pudgy penguin, I probably would have just sent you like an alert. Oh, yeah. I do have to shout out to my my uh, igloo in Denver. Um, I know you and the punks had a great meet together on Saturday afternoon. Unfortunately, had a prior engagement, but uh, looked like a blast. And I'm grateful to 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 meet the huddle in Denver. The huddle is strong there. Um, there was a couple other people that I got to meet uh, IRL. Uh, Kenton uh, got to meet Kenton, and, and what was hilarious is. Um, he knew me by my PFP on my backpack. Oh. Yeah, he saw my PFP on my backpack, and he was like, are you Taco? Player one Taco? And I was like, yeah. He's like, bro, I know that voice anywhere. You are. I know it was you, but your PFP on your backpack. So, just so people know, uh, I have the, uh, this light-up backpack that I got from my NFT project, Orbis86. And uh, we sell them on our website. But uh, if you're in Dallas or Austin, we'll deliver it to you. Exactly. Um, and uh, it was sort of cool. Um, got to put all my PPs on there. Um, and got to uh, make some other protocols and projects happy. Uh, throwing their logos there as well. Yeah. You know. We got to see Liquid Loans. We got to see Four Plabs. Quai Chain. Quai Chain? I didn't know you were up there. Yeah. Made friends with them uh, while we were at the Now Wolf thing. 
I, I gotta say, the Meow Wolf thing was amazing. Um, I, uh, we got lost and found the magic musical room. That was pretty cool. Yes. Um, one of the funnest things was at like the end of the night, they had a little video game that was like motion sensitive. And I got to do this like back and forth sway dance. Got to meet this guy, Ramon. Oh, yeah. And we had it on Twitter if anybody wants to see it. It is. It is. My, my horribly horrible sway back and forth prom dance moves. Um, it's pretty great. <laughs> I thought it was pretty great. It was. But uh, it was, that was a really cool uh, friendship there. Um, Ramon comes from the Moby Wallet team over there at MobileCoin. Um, I, I don't. I haven't tried out the Moby Wallet. Um, it's probably on my agenda of things to try out. I think I might have downloaded it, but I haven't done anything with it. Um, but one of the things I really do like is um, MobileCoin and being able to send crypto within Signal Wallet. So that's sort of my my fun piece there. Say that one more time, please. Mobile coin. It is the only crypto that you can send within the app signal. Oh. And you send it via text message. Privacy token. I'm not a huge privacy token fan. I do believe in peer, like minor peer-to-peer transactions. Cool, you know. Um, but I think uh, I think the world needs block the the transparency and consistency. Uh, a blockchain to move forward, you know. I think that's part of the reason why there's so much fight back on it is the fact that it is so transparent. No one wants to see what that twenty five thousand dollar toilet seat really is buying. So, South by Southwest is coming up. Uh, anything else on ETH Denver before we move on? Um, the side events were great. Really appreciate the Thai. Huge shout out to the Thai. Chai Network. I always. I, was it Chai I, or Tia? Chai. No, that's the thing. It's the, the work. Oh, just Chai. 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 Kwai. 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 Talk about. Uh, Chia Protocol had an event. I think that's where. Yep. Yeah. Really appreciate going to the site events and the effort that people put in to like have a nice event. Yep. Um, it's not everybody in crypto is an event coordinator, mm-hmm. uh, so they have to pull that all together and figure it out. They probably forget things, running around trying to figure it out. Maybe some people have it down pat. Maybe some people hire other people to do it, but it always comes together at the last minute. So I appreciate all that. Yep. We actually got to throw an event. Uh, crypto, cigars, and caffeine. Yes. We had about 15, 15, 20 people show up. That was uh, throughout the night. Um, and then it became a uh, became a little haven for a lot of the DGENs. The one wanted a little quieter spot. Um, and that was at my favorite cigar lounge, uh, Palma. What were your thoughts on Palma? Uh Palma was nice. Got to talk to a few people. Um, I have to say that I'm not a cigar smoker, so it was a little smoky for me at times. Uh, Really got in the contacts, you know. Yeah. But besides that, I enjoyed going there. There's a really good Mexican place just down the street from there. We went there for a night. Shout out to Snap Brilla. Snap Brilla! Brilla or Brilla? Brilla, like brilliant. Like brilliant. Yeah, brilliant has an eye in it. Yeah. Brilla does too. I know, so it makes me want to say Brilla. Is that just because we were talking about a taco place? What? Uh, anyway, um, went to dinner with them. Yeah. Was it El Diablo? Yep. Very good. Los, Los Diablos. Los Diablos, got it. Yeah. Uh, Snap Brilla, what they're doing, they're making a mobile wallet. Yes. For right now, Cardano, ETH, 
and Polygon. And then what's really cool is they're integrating Strike as a service. So banking as a service. Okay. So they don't have to be money. They don't need a money transmitter license at all. Oh, right. So their wallet, you can have a bank account too. Just like a, like a Venmo or a PayPal type of thing. Yeah, they're really thinking, they're, they're making it easy for people to transition between Web 2 and Web 3, aren't they? They are. Um, some of the pieces within that is like DIDs and stuff like that. Yep. So... Uh, for those that don't know, DID is digital identities um, or, you know, proof of work, you know, like KYD badges, know your dev. Uh, so when you actually complete work, uh, you have that history on chain that you did as a soulbound token. Um, some really cool stuff there. Can, can you explain soulbound tokens for those of us who haven't quite figured that out yet? Yeah, so soulbound tokens are non-transferable. Right now, used as either coins, uh, tokens, or NFTs, non-fungible tokens, um, that cannot be traded or transferred. So even if even if you gave your twelve words, never give your twelve words away, or twenty-four words, or your secret recovery phrase, or case on file away, never do that unless it's someone you want to have, be able to have full access. Um, it couldn't be it can't be moved except for by the issuer so the purpose behind that is no more false credentials yeah um one of the ways that that was done early on was by um not breaking the contract but by uh basically um making max transfer zero you know and so people couldn't transfer their token and stuff like that. And that was sort of the piece on that. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, that was sort of, that was sort of good to see. Um, before I forget, uh, Arbitrum was there as well. Another layer or two. Uh, doing some cool stuff with their Dex Grail. Um, One Inch was there as well, uh, showcasing their new hard, uh, hard wallet that's coming out. Did you get a chance to take a look at it? No, I did not take, get a chance to take a look at it. Okay. Uh, I will say Denver, the East Denver was so big that I felt like I didn't have time to see everything that was there. Yeah. Or go and go to, you know, talks. I guess I saw a, few, a little bit of talks in the Coinbase room. Uh, Got to see some of the projects that were able to do their presentations. Yep. Overall, I think it was a really well-run event. Uh, probably the biggest one I've been to. Yeah. Um, I think Las Vegas ones might have been expected to be bigger, but they weren't. Yep. The Las Vegas ones were some of the some of the ones in Las Vegas were their first years. Yep. You know, first time running them. And so, yeah, it could be expected, you know. Um, I, I know one of the biggest uh, project-based uh, uh, event uh, conferences we went to in Vegas was CNFT, Cardano NFT. Yeah, that was a big event. 150 projects there. That was pretty cool. Um, I do have one complaint about East Denver. I complained about it almost the entire time. Can I guess what it is? Of course you can. Let me guess. Was it the internet? Not only just the internet, but cell phone service. Um, that was that was the only drawback of being in a Faraday cage, I think. Um, what's sort of cool, we went to uh, East Denver uh, Western Sock Show maybe a few days before it started. And we got to see horses. And we got to see horses. They didn't seem as interested in crypto as we hoped. But. No. Hey. Putting a, putting a horse, you know, right now they use tracking uh, chips on horses for their pedigree and for their breed history and for their, you know, ownership. Yep. NFT of horses to tie that, you know. 
there are so many uses for NFTs once you kind of understand what they can do. Um, but I think that I think that one of the issues is that there's a lot of entrenched industries yeah. that unless they can get their head around it and leverage it, new people coming in with these ideas, it might hit headwinds. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, we've met some interesting people in their parking lot. Yep. Uh, a lot of interesting people in the parking lot, but, but specifically a, a horse trainer yeah. um, and, and his partner and stuff like that. So he was teaching people who wanted to learn about horses and, and, you know, how to not break them, but like how to hold themselves. I think mostly, most of what that training is, is being confident around a horse, but also being gentle and, and empathetic to the horse. So the horse knows that you're in charge, but also that it can trust you, that you're not going to do anything bad to it. Um, I don't know. Horses are beautiful. I, I love them. Um, they're amazing creatures. So, uh, what do you think about uh, South by Southwest so far with some of the stuff we, we have lined up? Well, I wish that I could tell you more. I am not sure everything that we have lined up. I know that we're going to be wearing backpacks and handing out stickers and talking about some projects. Yep. Uh, I am interested to see all the side events. I've never been to Austin, so I would. I hear really good things about it, and I would like to see it. Yeah. Um. Excited for Austin. Um, a lot of the events that we have lined up are with uh, foreign foreign country uh, blockchain events. To sort of see what they're building around the world. Um, that's uh, the EU, uh, Germany, um, Spain, uh, and Canada are some of the major event holders that we're going to be going and visiting. Okay. Um, and yeah, we do want to do a shout out to our friends over that are going to be over at NFTLA. Um, the outer edge, as it's gonna, it's as it's getting its name changed to. I'll still re always refer to it as NFTLA, but uh, yeah, we got some cool stuff. There's some cool stuff brewing there. Uh, we will will not be making it to NFTLA this time, but um, we will be at NFT Miami after Austin. Looking forward to that. I am. You know, I am. I'm interested in uh, warm weather. Flip-flop weather? Yeah, if I could find my flip-flops. Okay. Um, so, all right. What, what's next on the agenda? We want to talk regulation? And the litigations we've seen coming across the, the shot, shots across the bow, so to speak? I think there's a question, right, as to whether there's shots across the bow or whether the SEC is going after legitimate, legitimately going after scams. I guess the qu further question would be, are they using the low-hanging fruit to create precedents that's going to create problems for uh, projects that are not scamming people? Yeah. And I don't know that you can even answer that right now. People can speculate quite a bit. So they will. Yeah. So I know there was the latest op uh, latest filings filed in Utah by Gary Ginsler of the SEC against uh, Bitcoin mining equipment um, or just all blockchain mining equipment um, as uh, as a security. Uh, transmitters of securities and thus falling under the SEC's purview. Well, I think what I read from the beginning of that, of that case in the summary was that a company called, well, there was a, I don't want to get it wrong, but it's like Green Enterprises and Green 
mining or whatever. It wasn't green as in, hey, this is green energy that we're using to mine, say, Bitcoin. It was, we are mining this token called green that is going to be on this green token chain called green. And it turns out that the token was actually an ERC-20 token. So if that's all true, that they were taking advantage of people who don't know the difference between an Ethereum ERC-20 or a token that runs on an Ethereum, um, which, or a token associated with a proof of work chain. Now, Ethereum's kind of weird because it is or was a proof of work chain, but the tokens that were on it weren't mined from the activity of hash power on the blockchain. On the blockchain. Yep. So, to me, that feels like the most egregious of scams that Unfortunately, with a little bit of research, yep. or a person who has a moderate amount of understanding of crypto, would probably have picked that up. So they were going after people who were very green to crypto. Ah, there was that green word. Um, I know there was a lot of talk on uh, some of the renewable energy stuff. Uh, within within blockchain, um, Energy Web Token had had a, had a nice little C up too as well. Uh, transference of ownership of electricity is a is the short one liner sentence for uh, EW. Uh, so people being able to own their electricity and if they have excess, being able to sell it off or buy it from someone else within the network. Um, so that's sort of a cool idea there as that gets built out. Um, but yeah, there's regulation pieces. Um, I, you know, I, I am not worried. I am flabbergasted. Flabbergasted. Flabbergasted by the amount of uh, actions that the SEC is taking against legitimate um, blockchain um, companies and blockchain actors um, when there's so many bad actors out there that get pointed out that get overlooked. And so um, it's one of those things to where uh you know, uh, look at, you know, uh, what I'm going to miss up her name, but, uh, the founder of Custodia. Caitlin Long. Caitlin Long. Um, you know, she pointed out bad actors and then she ended up getting, you know, shot. Mess. Um, be a deposit uh, bank yep. that would be able to interact have an account at the Fed. Yeah. Um, they were denied. The application was denied. Uh, I think 